There's an area of critical importance that we want to be sure and cover in the second year of the program. And that is system voltages and transformer ratings. In the third and the fourth year of the program, you will be diagramming transformer connections. So it's critically important that you understand system voltages and also transformer ratings. We will diagram our transformers. So it's particularly important that you understand three-phase systems. Now I'm going to go through and uh, go back right back to the basic generator and uh, draw an oversimplified generator if you will and show you the source of our three phase system and the ways in which we connect that system. Now if I was to draw an oversimplified generator I'll have two poles I have a north pole and a south pole within this generator. And then what I'll do is I'll have we, we our, all our systems now are basically three phase systems. And with three phase systems in an oversimplified generator, you see we would have three windings inside of that generator. And for each winding, we'll bring a couple of conductors out. And you would see then that if I did that, it would look like this. I would have six wires. And in our generator, our oversimplified generator, you would see that as our coils cut the flux lines, we'll induce a voltage. Remember when we talked about sources of voltage? Uh, Magnetism is a source of voltage, for example. We said that, that any time a conductor or a coil cut flux lines, that it'll cause our electrons to want to move. Now, the position of that coil within the generator determines the value of voltage at any given instant of time that that particular coil would induce. Now, if I was to take one of these coils and show its rotation through the inside of that magnetic field, you would see that at this point right here, at zero degrees, that out here I would induce zero volts, not cutting any flux lines. As that coil rotates through that magnetic field, it's going to start cutting them at a faster rate. When it gets at right angles right here, it's going to be cutting them at its fastest rate. And I would induce the highest voltage when it got up here at what we would call 90 degrees. At 90 degrees, then, I would have, here's my 90 degrees, here's 0 degrees, I would have my maximum induced value of voltage. As it starts dropping down the other side, that coil is going to start cutting less and less flux lines, so the voltage isn't going to be as high. This would be 180 degrees, just opposite 0 degrees. And at that point, I would be inducing 0 volts again. Now it's going to start cutting them in the reverse direction, start cutting them at a faster rate only in the reverse direction. So down here at this point at 270 degrees, it'll induce them at the maximum rate in the negative direction. In other words, 270, 180, and if I go on out here, you'll see now it'll start cutting them at a lesser rate, less flux line. And then I would have 0 or 360, I would be back at 0 volts again. Now if I would trace this out through all the degrees, and we'll do that sometime, you would see that my, my uh, curve would look something like this. In other words, I would have a sine wave induced for one particular coil now that would look something like this. Now that's a sine wave fourth year of the program, we'll be doing some trig and we'll come back to this again. 
but uh, you would see that this would be one particular phase through one period or one cycle, you see. Now, that would be a very inefficient generator. Single phase and then one complete revolution inside that generator for one phase, you see. So, uh, what, you, what we would have would be actually three phases because the coils are all 120 degrees apart in here. So if I'd go down the line at 120, you would see I would have a build up again of another phase and it would look something like this. And then uh, another 120 down the line, which would be 240, it would go up again and it would look something like this. Then you would see that, that if I was to plot this all out for all my coils and at any given instant of time, say for example, show their voltage values, you would see that I would have three phases all 120 degrees apart and then alternating. The, the current flow is alternating in direction. Now we want to work with three phase. All of our systems, most all of our systems I should say, are all three phase. And we can represent each of those phases with a vector. In other words, I can draw a vector. And if you remember the first year we talked about vectors, a vector shows magnitude and direction. Relative to one another, I can draw those vectors in and I can measure those vectors for voltage value and plot them on out and we'll use vectors. Now I can draw those phases as vectors representing particular phase angles and assign a magnitude to them. If I draw out my vectors, you would see that I would have, for one particular phase, I would probably be in this particular direction. And I'll identify it 0 to A. We're going to identify our phases by letter. And then we'll have another one over here that will come down about this angle. And all these phases are 120 degrees apart. We'll go 0 and then we'll call this one B. And then we'll go out here and we'll put another one out here. And then we'll say this is zero. And then this is C. Okay. Now we could say, let's say, let's say we're generating in here 2400 volts. So that each of my vectors here represent 2400 volts. At any given instant of time, this would be the phase angles that we'd be dealing with, all 120 degrees apart. We're showing all of our phases here, all of our coils, if you will, with two different conductors coming out. We can make some of those conductors common. In other words, I can, I can tie some of these wires together and I can come up with fewer wires. The first one I want to show you is a delta. If I draw this vector down here like this, identify my phase, 0 to A, I can connect, say for example, this next phase in this particular direction and I'll go 0 to B. On the next one, I'll draw my other phase in there, and I'm going to go across here like this, and I'll go 0 to C. Now, what I'm doing, I'm connecting my some of my wires in common. I'm going 0 B together, 0 A together, 0 C together, and when I do that, I'm coming out now with a situation where we have three wires. <clears throat> now, if I would connect up, and, we'll, and this is delta configuration now, if I would connect up delta, I'm going to be connecting up head to tail, head to tail, all the way around with my vectors. 
and I would have what we would call a delta system. Now we can identify that system by the number of wires. We're going to have three wires in a delta system. Now we're not talking about a secondary system for a consumer. We're talking about our high side systems now where where we're feeding with uh, say distribution, subtransmission, or transmission. And we're going to call the three wire then a delta system. And we're going, we've, they're going to be connected just as we see it here. Now if I would connect this system up like this, you would see that between my phases, A, C, C, B, B, A, you would see all the way around there that I would have 2400. It's a three phase system and it's three wire. Okay, this would be one particular way to connect our system. Now there's another way we can connect our system where we get some of our wires common. And with this what we'll do is we'll bring down, we'll, we'll, we'll tie all of one spot together in the center. Then we're going to come down with, with our A phase. We'll go 0, A. Then we're going to go 0, B. Then we're going to go out here and then we're going to go 0 and C. Now with this particular configuration what we've got is a common. Most times it's grounded out. This would mean then that we would have our common or our ground as one point and we'll identify it as N. Then we'll have our phases you see and we would have a four wire. And we call this a Y, or some of the old timers call it a star. Most of them call it a Y. We would have a Y system. And uh, with this, we'll identify that as a four wire system. So we have a Y, and that's a four wire system. Now you can see that now my voltage my 2400 volts for each vector is going to give us a value between the phases of a value which is greater than that. Now when we refer to system voltages we want to always refer to the phase to phase value. If I, if I have a distribution system it's a three wire, I'd know there would be a delta system. If I had a four wire, I would know I had a Y system. And that I have a center common ground. If I have a Y system, like I say, it's four wire. The phase to phase value is always our system voltage and it's critical that you remember that. Because when we get into system voltages, transformer ratings, and so on, you'll see that there's a definite system in, in the transformer ratings. And I want to get into transformer ratings in a little bit. So take, pay particular attention to that fact. Now I know out there there's a lot of people that they'll refer, you ask them what they have for a system voltage and they'll give you the phase to ground value. Don't try and change anyone. Uh, it, we're, we're using this method because this is the application of your transformer ratings. Your, your system voltage and your, and your transformer ratings will, if you will, jibe. You'll see where the transformer ratings on the name and data plate are system voltages. And if you don't understand the application of system voltages to your system, then you're gonna have a trouble learning transformer connections as we as we uh, use vectors. So just pay particular attention to the fact that the system voltage is a phase to phase value. Now, I want to get into the three phase relationships in a little bit, but first, I just let you know now that if I would graphically I'm not going to use the mathematical yet because I want to show you where that comes from. But if I would graphically draw this on, on, uh, on some uh, graph paper, you would see that I would have, if I had 2400 from here to neutral, 
that between my phases I would have 4160. So in my delta system I had a 2400 three phase three wire on my Y system now with my voltage vectors equivalent to 2400 volt I would have a 4160 system. My voltage is increased by 1.73 and we'll come back to that.